Graphing, slope intercept form, part one. I'd like you to start by doing this investigation. I've given you three graphs with the equations above them in slope intercept form. Now, what I would like you to do is find the slope and the y-intercept of each graph, write it down below, and see if you find anything similar in the equation. So remember, the y-intercept is the point where the line crosses the y-axis. Stop the recording now and do this, and once you're done, turn it back on. Okay, so I gave you some points to work with. Now, what is the, I'm looking at my first graph, number one, y equals 2x minus 1. And my y-intercept is the point where it crosses the y-axis, which is negative 1. My slope, in order to find slope, I need rise over run. So I've given you two points. There is my rise. There is my run. So when I calculate my rise and my run, I get 6 over 3, which I can reduce to 2 or 2 over 1. Now look at the equation. Look at those numbers. Do you see anything that where the y-intercept could be? Do you see anything where the slope could be? All right, hopefully you've come up with a theory for the equation. Let's do the second one. First, my y-intercept is the point where it crosses the y-axis, which is positive one. My slope between the two points, first I need my rise and I need my run. When I calculate those, I get Rise is 6, run is 12, giving me 1 half, or a fraction that I can reduce to 1 half. Now, again, look at the equation. Do you see 1 in the equation? Do you see 1 half in the equation? Does this support your theory? Finally, example number 3. Notice it's a negative slope. Again, what's my y-intercept? It is 2. What's my slope? Well, my rise and my run are there. Now, notice that to go from one point to the other, I have to go negative for either rise or run. Therefore, it's going to be down 4 and over 2, or a slope of negative 2. Conclusion. What I hoped you noticed is the constant in the equation and the y-intercept are the same. And when you looked at the coefficient of the equation and the slope, you should have noticed that they are the same as well. This leads us into slope-intercept form. This is the base formula for slope-intercept form. y is equal to mx plus b. x and y are constantly changing depending on where we are on the line. However, m and b should be the same. m represents my slope and b represents my y-intercept. Example A, number one. For the following equations, identify the slope and the y-intercept. Well, let's start with A. y equals negative 3x plus 5. Well, slope is the value in front of the variable or the coefficient. In this case, that's negative 3. Well, the y-intercept is the constant. In this case, that's 5. Stop the recording now and try B, C, and D, and I will do them in a minute. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to try this. First, y is equal to negative 5 plus 4x. How is this different from the other one? Well, the order is different. The constant is at the start, and the coefficient is later on. So, but order doesn't matter. My slope is still the coefficient, which is 4. My y-intercept is the constant or number by itself, which is negative 5. For C, what have I done here? I have switched them around on the sides of the equal sign, where y is now on the right-hand side. However, this does not matter. Slope is still the coefficient. In this case, the coefficient to x is 2. However, there is no y-intercept mentioned. So what does that mean? Well, that must mean that my y-intercept is 0. 
and there is no point in mentioning it. Finally, D. The point for D is that you realize that slope can be in fraction form and as well, the fraction can also represent the y-intercept. So in this case, my slope is the number in front of x, which is 4 over 5, but it is a negative value. So that's negative 4 over 5. We've got to include the sign in front of it. And my y-intercept is a fraction. It is the constant or 2 over 3. Example number 2. Write an equation in slope-intercept form that has a y-intercept of negative 3 and a slope of 1. Well, first of all, my formula for slope-intercept form is y is equal to mx plus b. I normally have to have x and y in order for it to be an equation. Thus, I need to fill in m and b. m is my slope, which is 1. So I know it's going to be y equals 1x. They tell me my y-intercept is negative 3, so I just put a negative 3 on the end. That would be my final answer. B. Write the equation in slope-intercept form that passes through 0, negative 4, and has a slope of negative 2. Well, first, we know that we've got a slope of negative 2. Therefore, we're going to have y equals negative 2x. But what is my y-intercept? They don't say the words y-intercept. Well, here's what I know. When I'm looking at a point that's on the y-axis, the x value has to have a 0. Therefore, the x value for any y-intercept is 0. So when I look at this, my x value is 0 for this coordinate. Therefore, negative 4 must be my y-intercept. Finally, C. Find the equation in slope-intercept form that has a slope of 5 over 4 and passes through the origin. Well, first, what do I know? I have a slope of 5 over 4. Therefore, I've got y is equal to 5 over 4 multiplied by x. But what's my y-intercept? They tell me about the origin. Well, what is the coordinate of the origin? It is 0, 0. That means that my x value is 0 at the origin. Therefore, its matching y value is my y-intercept. In this case, that is 0. I guess I could mention it, make it y equals 5 over 4 x plus 0, but there is no point, so I don't need to. So that would be my final answer. Graph each equation on graph paper using slope-intercept form. Now, when we are given the equation in slope-intercept form, so how do we graph something using this? Well, first, let's identify my y-intercept and my slope. In this case, my y-intercept is my constant, which is a number alone by itself, or negative 3. My slope is my coefficient, or number in front of x, which is 2 over 3. Now, when I break this down, it means that my rise is 2 and my run is 3. At this point, I now need to draw my line. The problem is, is there are billions of lines that could have a slope of 2 over 3. So I need a starting point to work from. And what is that point? Well, I know my line goes through my y-intercept or negative 3. So I'm going to start by putting a point at my y-intercept of negative 3. At this point, I'm now going to use my slope to find another point. My slope has a rise of 2, so from my original point, I'm going to go up 2. I have a run of 3, so I'm going to go over 3. So I went from my original point, I went up 2, over 3, and I know that that point is on my line. I now can draw a line going through both of them. As I have not been told that the line stops, I must put arrows on the end of both lines, at the end of both parts, and all graphs require a title, so I have to put the title. What is the title of this graph? It is y is equal to 2 over 3x minus 3. All right, your turn. Try this example, and I will do it in a minute. Now I'm going to give you a little clue 
3 over 2 is my y-intercept, but it's very hard to visualize 3 over 2, so I recommend you convert it to a decimal. All right, stop the tape now and start it when you've tried this. Okay, we're back. My y-intercept is 3 over 2, which is the same thing as 1.5. My slope is my coefficient, or the number in front of x, which is negative 2. Now, what does this mean for my rise and my run? Well, this is a, um, a single number, not a fraction. However, we can convert it to a fraction. So my rise would be negative 2. My run would be negative 1. Although, you, since it is a fraction, we could have put the negative with the negative 1 as well. So, first, I need a starting point. My starting point is 1.5. So, I'm going to plot a point at 1.5 and on the y-axis. My now, oh, I now need to find another point that I can use to draw my line through. So, my slope is negative 2. In this case, that means I'm going to go down 2, and my run is 1, so I'm going to go over 1. And I know that there is another point on the line right there. I draw my line, I make sure I have arrows on the ends, and I draw out my equation. Now, what happens if I wasn't able to go down? Well, the slope itself is negative, which means I could also have gone up, 2, which is positive, and then go over 1 in the negative direction, or minus 1. Notice, I would still be on the line. 